For any size gift before Ash Wednesday, February 14th, we'll send you my 2024 Lenten devotional booklet. Make a secure online donation at thewordendoors.org or make your check payable to The Word Endures and send it to Box 616, Collinsville, Illinois, 62234. And we'll send you my new devotional book for Lent, By Your Holy Cross. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is brought to you in part by the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. LHF is a recognized service organization of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, dedicated to translating and publishing the books of our Lutheran faith into more than 100 languages for our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. Learn how you can take part in their work at lhfmissions.org. Welcome to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. It's unfortunate that the ESV renders the Hebrew term there as our relative. The King James Version gives you the more literal, our brother. Even though the word brother is primarily used to denote siblings, it also has this wider sense in Scripture in which it is used for more distant relatives. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a daily verse-by-verse Bible study with the church, past and present. Pastor Whedon is leading us in a study of the book of Ruth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Greetings, people loved by God. In our previous podcast, we heard about the morning after. As the light was just beginning to grow, Boaz and Ruth arose. He didn't want anyone to know that a woman had spent the night on the threshing floor, thus protecting both her honor and his own. He tells Ruth to stretch out her garment, and he loads it with six measures of barley, and after he loads it onto her, he sends her back to her mother-in-law. After making her way back to the city, she comes to Naomi, who's eager to hear how things turned out. Ruth tells her all that Boaz had done for her, which at this point mostly amounted to the promise to see that she would be redeemed. He also had told her that she couldn't return to Naomi empty-handed and had laid in her with the barley. Remember how this reverses Naomi's situation. She went out full and came back empty, chapter 1, but Ruth goes out empty, asking only for mercy, and comes back full. I also suggest it that this was a sort of bride price that Boaz was offering. Finally, Naomi urges Ruth to wait and see how the matter will turn out. She knows that Boaz will act expeditiously to settle things. A reading from Ruth, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now Boaz had gone up to the gate and sat down there. And behold, the Redeemer, of whom Boaz had spoken, came by. So Boaz said, Turn aside, friend, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. Then he said to the Redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, Buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. If you will not, tell me, that I may know, for there is no one besides you to redeem it, and I come after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, The day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. Then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Ruth 4, verses 1 through 6. Let us pray. Grant, we beg you, Almighty God, to us and to your whole church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course, and be preached and taught to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name abide to our end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ready to ponder today's passage? Let's work through it together. Verse 1. 
Now Boaz had gone up to the gate and sat down there, and behold, the Redeemer of whom Boaz had spoken came by. So Boaz said, Turn aside, friend, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. The gate of the city was the place where legal affairs were often transacted in ancient Israel. When Boaz invites the unnamed nearer relative to turn aside and sit down, the other would realize that he was being invited to be a participant in some legal matter, either as a interested party or as a witness. The Lutheran Study Bible suggests that the title friend was used as a circumlocution for the man's name in order not to bring shame on the man's family for what the fellow would decline to do, thus not doing what was his duty. Remember that the word redeemer here means something like next of kin, who would then in that society have the first dibs at restoring Elimelech's inheritance. Verse 2, and he took 10 men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. These 10 elders would serve both as witnesses, jury, and judges to the proceeding that Boaz was initiating. The abundant number constitutes a quorum of sorts. And as Proverbs 11:14 puts it, where there is no guidance of people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. So Boaz is clearly taking the safe course by involving a fair number of his fellow citizens in the matter he's about to bring up. Verse 3. Then he said to the Redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. It's unfortunate that the ESV renders the Hebrew term there as our relative. The King James Version gives you the more literal, our brother. Even though the word brother is primarily used to denote siblings, it also has this wider sense in Scripture in which it is used for more distant relatives. For example, in Genesis 13, verse 8, Abram uses the little word for brother to describe his relationship to Lot, his nephew. Again, the King James Version gives you it straight there. The ESV, I think, uses kinsman. The law states in Leviticus 25, verse 25, if your brother becomes poor and sells part of his property, then his nearest redeemer shall come and redeem what his brother has sold. So by the use of the word brother here for Elimelech, Boaz is clearly stating that this other man or himself has a familial duty to redeem the property. As the Lutheran Study Bible notes, before leaving for Moab some 11 years previous, Elimelech had apparently sold the rights to the harvest on his land, and Naomi is now asking the Redeemer to purchase back for her the right to the harvest from that same land. Verse 4, So I thought I would tell you of it and say, Buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not, tell me that I may know, for there is no one besides you to redeem it, and I come after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Boaz makes it clear to the man and to those sitting there that this man has the premier legal claim. He stands in closer relation to Elimelech than does Boaz. Again, he possibly was an older cousin and Elimelech a younger cousin. Boaz thus publicly concedes that the choice is the man's. And there's not a little bit of accusation in his words. You ought to have done this for your brother's family, is the clear implication. So now the time has come for you to decide. Will you fulfill this obligation or will you not? From Boaz's words, and I come after you, the meaning is clear, and if you won't, I will. The man perhaps had excused himself by arguing that Elimelech was not his literal sibling, so he had no obligation toward him. Boaz closes that loophole and demands to know if the man will do his duty. No doubt shamed a bit by Boaz laying the matter out so bluntly, the man, maybe grudgingly, agrees to do the right thing. I will redeem it. Boaz then adds, verse 5, Then Boaz said, The day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, the widow of the dead, in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. The Hebrew has, you also buy it from Ruth. 
Boaz's words once again imply that brother must not be heard in the narrow sense. To Boaz, it was clear that the intent of the law of Moses about perpetuating the name of the dead did not come to an end if there were no other siblings of the deceased. It rather than spread out to his next of kin. Deuteronomy 25, verses 5 and 6 reads, If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead man shall not be married outside the family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go into her and take her as his wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. And the first son whom she bears shall succeed to the name of his dead brother, that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. Boaz is thus pressing this obligation to his deceased brother on this man, not just of restoring the land in accord with Leviticus 25, but of marrying the brother's widow, as in Deuteronomy 25, and doing so precisely to provide an heir for the land that will bear the legal descent of the deceased brother. This was a step too far for the nearer kinsman, even if not for pious Boaz. Verse 6. Then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. As the man thinks this through, he sees a major problem. He and his family would be responsible for working land, whose proceeds would go to Naomi and Ruth, and above all, to the firstborn son of his union with Ruth. And that boy would be the heir of this land and of whatever comes from it. And if there were further children from Ruth, they would be his, and they would have a claim on his inheritance along with his present children. He's not willing to have his own family work land like that for others, even when they were relatives, and then to have to divide his own inheritance further with children from this Moabite woman? No way. He was willing to have bought back the right to the harvest from the land, but not to provide the land with an heir who would ultimately be reckoned as son of another. So, being unwilling to regard it as his duty to be a brother to either Kilian or Malon, the man cedes to Boaz his legal right. He thus removes himself from any obligation to Ruth and Naomi, which allows Boaz to assume his place. The Opus Imperfectum, an anonymous 4th century document, says of this, Boaz took Ruth to be his wife because of the merits of her faith, so that a royal nation might be born out of so holy a marriage. For Boaz, an old man, did not take a wife for himself, but for God not on account of his corporeal passions, but on account of the justice of the law to revive the seed of his kinsmen, not serving love so much as religion. He was old in age, but youthful in faith. That's where we're going to call a halt for today. Next up, we'll hear about the odd custom of removing the sandal and handing it over to seal the deal something that was no longer current practice when the book is written and that the writer undertakes to explain. Boaz will receive the nearer kinsman shoe with words making all those sitting around him witnesses of the fact that he has bought from the hand of Naomi all that belongs to Elimelech and his sons and also that he has now purchased Ruth to be his own wife in order to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance. All the people agree. We are witnesses. And they add a blessing upon Ruth herself, showing that she has now been made legally an Israelite and praying that she bring fame and honor to Ephrathah and Bethlehem. Till next time, people loved by God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for listening to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a listener-supported program. You can donate by check. Make your check payable to The Word Endures and send it to Box 616, Collinsville, Illinois, 62234. You can also make a secure online contribution at thewordendures.org. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a production of LPR, 
Lutheran Public Radio.